This is a LiDAR 360 version 5.0 forestry module tutorial. This tutorial will include forestry data pre-processing, terrestrial and aerial laser scanning, forestry analysis, forest metrics extraction, and more. Let's first start with the forestry data, pre-processing which is required before the data can be used to perform TLS or ALS forestry analysis. After the forestry data is imported, it can be displayed by using the available visualization options, subsampling point clouds, namely reducing the number of point clouds. LiDAR 360 offers three methods for resampling, minimum point spacing, sampling rate, and octree. Minimum point spacing is the default sampling type, and users need to set a minimum point spacing between two points so that the minimum three-dimensional distance between any two points and the sampled point cloud will not be less than this value. The larger the value is set, the fewer points will be kept. For other available sampling types in their detailed descriptions, please refer to the user manual. The Remove Outliers tool aims to remove gross errors as much as possible and therefore improve the data quality. Neighbor points refers to the number of points required in the neighborhood to calculate the average distance of each point. The multiples of standard deviation defines the factor multiplied by the standard deviation to calculate the maximum distance. Ground points classification is an important operation of point cloud preprocessing, which can be implemented in LiDAR 360 with an improved progressive. The Triangular Irregular Network Densification Filtering Algorithm. The algorithm first generates a sparse triangular irregular network through seed points, and then iteratively processes layer-by-layer -layer densification until all ground points have been classified. Because the actual terrain is complex and changeable, when using this function to perform ground point classification, different parameters need to be adjusted in order to achieve relatively ideal results. In addition, the classification result and local area can be reclassified by classified ground by selected and the classified by interactive editing tool. Digital elevation model is the digitized simulation of terrain through limited topographic elevation data, such as the digitized representation of terrain surface. It represents the ground elevation with a set of ordered numerical array. LiDAR 360 provides three kinds of raster cell interpolation methods, inverse distance weight interpolation, Kriging interpolation, and triangular irregular network interpolation. For more information on the interpolation method settings, please refer to the grid parameters section in the user manual. Digital surface model refers to the digital representation of height of the surface, including the buildings, bridges, trees, etc. Compared to a DEM, a DSM contains more elevation information for buildings, bridges, forests, and other surface objects that don't exist in the DEM. DSM is based on the DEM and further covers the elevation of surface information other than the ground, same as the DEM. Please refer to the grid parameters section in the user manual for interpolation settings instruction. Canopy height model CHM can be obtained by subtracting DEM from the DSM. Therefore, using this function requires a DEM and a DSM. The normalization tool can remove the influence of terrain relief on the elevation value of the point cloud data. This function requires that the extent of the DEM overlaps with the extent of the point cloud data. Normalization process is performed by subtracting the corresponding terrain elevation of the DEM from each point Z value. The Add Z value to Additional Attributes option. Add the Z value of the current point cloud to the Additional Attributes table. If this option is not checked, then the normalized point cloud cannot be denormalized. The normalization tool can remove the effects of topographic relief on the elevation value of point cloud data. This normalize by ground points function requires that the input data has already been classified into ground points and non-ground points. The normalization process is performed by subtracting the terrain elevation from each point Z value. The output of this function is similar to normalized by DEM. The preprocessing processes for both TLS and ALS forestry analysis are the same. 
the pre-processed data can now be analyzed by either TLS or ALS methods. In the coming tutorials, TLS Forest module has two modes, Basic and Advanced. Click the button at the upper right corner to select mode. Basic mode provides one-click processing for TLS analysis. The TLS point cloud segmentation method utilizes a bottom-up approach to identifying individual trees first. Select classes which participate in the point cloud segmentation. Users can control the accuracy and efficiency of the individual tree segmentation process by changing the cluster tolerance value. The minimum cluster size parameter will influence the growing a point cloud of individual tree crowns setting. The maximum and minimum DBH values for upper and lower DBH thresholds for fitting DBH. Only the points above the set height above ground parameter will be involved. Tree height is the lower threshold of an object which could be recognized as a tree. Trunk height is setting the range for the algorithm to extract points between height above ground and trunk height. The color rendering optimization for each individual tree is checked by default. After the point cloud being segmented, the tree ID information is stored in the LiData file. If the segmented point cloud data needs to be segmented again, users need to clear the tree ID first. Seed points file needed to be generated first before using the point cloud segmentation from seed points tool. The TLS point editor can be used to extract DBH for individual trees. To add or delete seed points to execute point cloud segmentation operations that include seed points and to measure physical attributes of individual trees found in the source data set. Select the point cloud data of multiple trees and then perform batch fitting of tree DBH. By default, the function uses the entire point cloud in the window for batch DBH. Fitting users can also select and add a part of point cloud for fitting the DBH. Inspector tool is used to check if the overlap DBH exist in the data. Use the fit dbh tool to select the desired individual tree for dbh fitting. When the TLS editor toolbar is open, the point cloud window will change to 2D display mode. The profile tool can show if the seed points are accurate in 3D. Click the profile tool button and a new window will appear. Click the mouse left button to select the polygon and all points within the polygon will be displayed in the new window. In 3D, after drawing the profile area in the main window, users can translate the profiled area by clicking Pan Profile Tool and see the profile data in real time. When editing is completed, the seed points can be saved as a CSV file, which can later be used in the point cloud segmentation from seed points tool. Open the point cloud segmentation from seed points tool, set the parameters according to the previous description. The input data includes normalized point cloud data and the corresponding seed point file. The first segmented results can be improved by further editing of the seed points. Open the TLS seed point editor again. Select the data to be edited, then a setting window will pop up to set the color and size of the seed point, whether to display the ID and the height of the point cloud for display. Import the seed points file and use the profile tool to view the point cloud and seed points of the selected area in real time. Use the seed points tool to seed points manually in under segmented places. Users are normally prompted to select the peak or the point close to the peak of a tree as the seed point. For places that are over segmented wrong, seed points can be selected and deleted by using the delete seed points tool. Clear all seed points tool can remove all seed points in the window. The profile tool can show if the seed points are accurate in 3D.
Click the Measure Individual Tree Attributes button to open a profile window to measure the attributes of individual trees, including tree height, DBH, straightness, etc. Perform point cloud segmentation from seed point again by using the edited seed points file. The individual tree filtering tool is used for manually examining or editing DBH fitting of individual tree segmentation results based on the user-defined filtering range. Users can display, hide, delete, extract, and highlight individual trees. The filtering methods are based on confidence level, tree ID, DBH, and tree height. Individual Tree Editor can extract the individual tree from the Big Data Point Cloud. For editing, including functions such as creating trees, merging trees, and deleting trees, select the data set needs to be edited and click the OK button. The data will be displayed by Tree ID and all other functions will become available. Click the Profile button to open the Profile window. Start to draw a hexagon in the window by clicking the mouse and end the drawing by double-click the mouse. This ROI is the area to be edited, and at this moment, the individual tree editing toolbar will appear at the top of the profile window. Click Create the Tree button, and a window will pop up. Select the class of the points that will be used to create the tree. In the drop-down menu, all the classes are selected by default, and then select the selection tool in the toolbar. The polygon selection tool is selected by default. Start to draw the selection area in the profile window by clicking the mouse and ending the drawing by double-clicking the mouse. The color of the points selected will be changed at this moment. The new tree is created successfully. Click the Merge Tree button and then pick the tree in the profile window. If the Pick Tree ID is not zero, its ID will be recorded and then pick another tree in the profile window. This newly picked tree will be merged to the tree, which is recorded in the first step. The color of the merged tree will be the same as the first tree picked. Users can right-click in the picking. Users can click the Delete Tree button to delete an individual tree. If a tree is deleted accidentally, users can click the Undo button to undo the last option. The maximum times of undoing is 20. Any operation before the last 20 steps cannot be undone. continue with the ALS forestry analysis methods. Canopy height model segmentation utilizes the watershed segmentation technique to identify and delineate individual trees and therefore obtain individual tree information, such as tree location, tree height, crown diameter, crown area, and tree boundaries. Maximum and minimum tree height defines the maximum and minimum threshold of tree heights in the study area. Crown-based height threshold refers to the starting height of the crown range. A reasonable base height value can help to improve the accuracy of the boundary and area of the crown. Gaussian smooth option control. Whether to perform Gaussian smoothing, sigma is the Gaussian smoothing factor. The greater the value is, the smoother the results are. Radius is the window size used by Gaussian smoothing, which should be an odd number. Point cloud segmentation can directly segment LiDAR point cloud, which can reduce the influence of under canopy information losses. In the canopy height and segmentation method, individual tree information, including tree location, tree height, crown diameter, crown area, and crown volume, can be obtained from the segmentation results. First, choose and confirm the classes which participate in the point cloud segmentation. Grid size is the grid resolution parameter used to identify tree positions. Buffer size refers to a threshold controls. The block size for performing segmentation height above ground value is used to ignore points below a certain height to avoid the influence of low vegetation. The optimized color rendering for individual tree segmentation results option can greatly solve the problem of rendering the same color to the trees next to each other.
There are two methods to generate seed points. Generate seed points from CHM and from layer stacking. The CHM option aims to generate individual tree seed points from CHM, so they can be used for point cloud segmentation based on seeds. The parameter settings are similar to the CHM segmentation. Maximum and minimum tree height defines the threshold of maximum and minimum tree height in the study area. Gaussian smooth can be selected to control whether to perform Gaussian smoothing. The layer stacking option aims to generate individual tree seed points using a layer stacking algorithm so that they can be used for point cloud segmentation based on seeds. Set the X size and Y size to define the grid X axis and Y axis resolution. Points below the set height above ground parameter will be ignored to avoid influence by low vegetation. Layer thickness is used to cut the layer for stacking. Minimum spacing between trees should be set as the minimum spacing of the trees. Buffer size is the threshold controls the block size for performing segmentation. Gaussian smooth option can decide whether to perform Gaussian smoothing. After the point cloud being segmented, the tree ID information is stored in the LIDATA file. If the segmented point cloud data needs to be segmented again, users need to clear the tree ID first. Open the point cloud segmentation from seed points tool. The input data includes normalized point cloud data and the corresponding seed points file. Select and confirm the classes which participate in a point cloud segmentation with seeds. Point cloud data above the set height above ground parameter will be divided into single trees. The optimized color rendering for individual tree segmentation result option can greatly solve the problem of rendering the same color to the trees next to each other. After the point cloud being segmented, the tree ID information is stored in the LIDATA file. If the segmented point cloud data needs to be segmented again, users need to clear the tree ID first. The ALS seed point editor tool can be used for checking the ALS individual tree segmentation results. Editing seed points and segmenting point cloud data based on the edited seed points. Select the data to be edited. Click OK and then other functions on the ALS editor toolbar will be available. Use the Add Seed Points tool to add seed points manually in under segmented areas. Users may be prompted to select the peak or the point close to the peak of a tree as the seed point. When the ALS point editor toolbar is open, the point cloud window will change to 2D display mode. The profile tool can show if the seed points are accurate in 3D. Click the Profile Tool button and a new window will be created. Click the mouse left button to select a polygon and all points within the polygon will be displayed in the new window in 3D. Use the Delete Selected Seed Points tool to delete seed points in the areas that are over-segmented. Incorrect seed points can be selected and deleted. Perform point cloud segmentation based on seed. Again, by using the edited seed points file, the parameter settings are the same as before.
After point cloud segmentation, properties like tree height and crown can be obtained. Filter Trees tool can be used to view, hide, delete, or export individual trees based on individual tree properties, such as tree ID, tree height, and crown area. For example, users can view the trees with height in certain range, or users can select the trees with extremely small or large crown area, which may be over-segmented or under-segmented. When using this function, users must add the segmented point cloud and the segmented result to the software. This section covers the forest metrics extraction and regression analysis under the ALS forest module. For forest metrics, there are three different calculation methods. Let's start with the calculate forest metrics by grid. The calculate forest metrics by grid tool calculates the forest metrics based on the point cloud data and grids. Split the point cloud data with multiple grids and then calculate the forest metrics in each grid. The forest metrics include elevation, intensity, canopy cover, leaf area index, and gap fraction. Set the X size and the Y size for the size of the grid in X and Y direction. Height break refers to the threshold. Divide the data in vertical direction. The point cloud above this height will be used to calculate the forest metric. Extinction coefficient is a mathematical expression of leaf probability distribution in 3D space. A corresponding raster TIFF file or CSV file will be generated for each input point cloud data, which can be used in the later regression analysis. The Calculate Forest Metrics by Polygon tool calculates the forest metrics based on the point cloud data in a given polygon file. Make sure the input point cloud is normalized shapefile, is the vector data that contains the polygon in which the users need to generate the forest metrics. Forest metrics include elevation, intensity, canopy cover, leaf area index, and gap fraction Height break refers to the threshold to divide the data in vertical direction and only point cloud above this height will be used for calculation. Extinction coefficient is a mathematical expression of leaf probability distribution in 3D space. Calculate forest metrics by forest stance tool calculates the forest metrics by forest stance. For each point cloud data, the parameter settings are the same to the previous methods. Please refer to the user manual for more information for each point cloud data. A record will be generated and stored in a CSV file. Regression analysis can be used to estimate forest parameters that cannot directly derive from LiDAR point cloud. The linear regression tool builds linear regression models and performs analysis to predict forest parameters. For sample data and dependent variable information, please refer to the user manual. Plot type can be either square or circle, selected based on the plot surveying methodology. Length parameter defines the length or radius of the plot based on the plot type. If the optimized by considering location uncertainty is checked, the value in the location uncertainty represents the accuracy value of the range query. The model will query all sample points that meet the conditions according to the range. Set the X and Y for coordinates of the plot center. The generated results can be either stored in a CSV file or a TIFF file. Users can select the independent variables from elevation percentile, elevation density intensity percentile, leaf area index, gap fraction, 
and canopy cover. Linear regression model can be defined by the user either enter or stepwise. Enter means all selected independent variables will be included, while the choice of independent variables from the user input will be carried out by an automatic procedure step by step if the stepwise option is used. Check the save regression model option to save the model in the output path. Check the save regression dataset option to save the data in a CSV and output path. Input the k-fold parameter for the k-fold cross-evaluation model. Once the process is done, the corresponding model report will be generated, which records the error and related values of the model. The Support Vector Machine tool is an implementation of the library for support vector machines for support vector regression. LiDAR360 supports forest metrics estimation using two support vector regression types and four kernel types. The parameter setting are almost the same to the linear regression tool besides setting the kernel type and support vector machines type. For kernel type, users can select the type of kernel function, including RBF function, linear polynomial, and sigmoid. SVM type Either Epsilon SVR or NU VR can be selected. The Fast Artificial Neural Network is the implementation of Fast Artificial Neural Network regression. To provide artificial neural network regression, the parameter settings are almost the same to the previous methods. Momentum is a parameter in the AN regression analysis for selecting the optimized path. Learning rate is the global learning rate for the training network. The Random Forest Regression tool uses Python package SIGIT, LEARN, and NUMPY to build up the Random Forest model. The parameter settings are nearly the same as the other methods. TreeNum defines the tree number in the Random Forest model. Max depth is the maximum depth. Min split is the minimum split. Min leaf is the minimum leaf number. The Run Existing Regression Model tool estimates force metrics using any available regression models including linear regression, support vector machine, fast artificial neural network, and random force regression. Insert independent variables by inserting file in either CSV or TIFF format. Files must have attributes of XY. X size, Y size plot type defines the plot type in either square or circle. The size of the plot can then be defined by setting either length for square or radius for circle. Thanks for tuning in to another tutorial video by Green Valley International.